everyone. My name is Mohamed Salah. I am the country manager for Startup Point Jordan, and I'm here uh, today to moderate uh, this lovely session. I will uh, allow our esteemed uh, guest speakers to introduce themselves. So let's start with Grant. Uh, I would love personally to thank him for sponsoring this hackathon and um, uh, Bank Saudi Currency. And I'm sure he can tell us more about the bank and their initiatives. Thank you, Mo, and, and greetings, everyone, um, wherever you are. So first of all, a um, little bit about the bank. So um, Bank Saudi Francy um, is a, a universal full function bank based um, headquartered in Riyadh. Um, we were established in 1977 and we're, we've got a diverse portfolio of, of um, service offerings to the kingdom, um, ranging from a large um, corporate bank right way through to retail banking and everything in between. We're, um, we're, we, we, like many of the, the banking industry, are, are on a big journey just now. Um, we're digitizing a, um, a lot of the banking operations. We're transforming our services to our customers. And that's been accentuated even more so by, by COVID. And ultimately, we have the ambition of being the, the digital go-to bank, being the most experiential bank, bank in the kingdom. So with that, um, we, were, we were delighted to have this opportunity to sponsor the hackathon. Um, we've got a big objective as part of this hackathon that's going to be um, run over the coming few weeks to, to really kind of partner with um, the great ideas and the firm that ultimately we select um, and, and, and really kind of help make that happen, put it into production. Um, just a bit about me. So I'm um, the head of Group Digital. Um, I'm currently sitting in Abu Dhabi just now um, with the, the, the lockdown. It's a bit tricky to get back into the kingdom. Um, but ultimately, my remit is I'm responsible for the group-wide digital strategy for Bank Saudi Fronty and the execution of it. And within that, we're also building out all our digital capabilities, um, which includes supporting and working with the fintech community. Um, and, and in time, as the regulations um, and become more kind of prominent within the kingdom, um, help support the, the rollout of the, the open banking infrastructure, which BSF are going to be um, very keen to lead with um, and support the, the overall market. So exciting opportunity. Thank you, Mo, for the introduction. And um, I'll hand back to the team just to say a few words who are on the rest of the panel. Um, better go ahead. Better yeah, thank muted. you, Mo, and uh, thank you, Grant. Um, so my name is Bed. I'm a technology strategy advisor covering the financial sector here in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I advise financial sector entities on how to effectively use technology to deliver value. Uh, I'm also part of the Oracle for Startups program. This is a program that Oracle launched uh, for startups in order to help them deliver value using Oracle capabilities. Uh, a point I'd like to add here as well, people, when, when they hear Oracle, automatically they assume that we mainly target enterprise customers. We don't really address the startup segment at all. This is actually a bit untrue. We're focusing on startups and smaller businesses as well. And we manage to provide them with uh, enterprise grade technology. Part of my job is to match uh, aspiring or successful startups with financial sector entities in order to help them adopt the innovation that was done through a much more agile entity such as Startup. Yeah, thank you. Back to you, Mo. Uh, thank you, Badr. And I would love to take a chance to also thank Oracle for all the support they are giving all across the region to all the startup communities and the, the, to the support they're, they're doing for us at Startup Grind globally. Uh, Mo, um, go ahead. Okay, hello uh, everyone. Uh, happy to be among you all. My name is uh, Mohamed Al Fahi. I'm the CEO of uh, Value. Uh, a bit about Value. Value is a is the first Egyptian uh, consumer finance uh, company built on uh, fintech. Uh, we've been in the market for the past two years or almost two and a half years. We uh, enable uh, our customers to. Uh, um, get what they need or to fulfill their aspirations and desires when it comes to products and services. So uh, we enable them to uh, um, get what they want at the time that they want uh, on installment basis. So they don't have or they don't need to have the cash for it. We uh, primarily provide uh, uh, financing uh, uh, up to 36 months 
and sometimes for 60 months for the high tickets. Uh, we're currently uh, driven by the value propositions we bring from our uh, merchants and uh, partners in the Egyptian uh, market. Uh, we bring the best offers and best deals in the market for our clientele base. We mainly focus on the uh, millennials and Generation X. They are uh, our favorite kind of uh, customers. And uh, I'm very pleased to be part of this uh, discussion and looking forward for a fruitful one, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grant. Thank you so much, Mo. And thank you so much, Peder, for joining us. Let me start with Grant. Uh, Grant, uh, when we were preparing for the session, you mentioned how financial, uh, personal financial is important for the economy and important for the well-being and important for the growth of countries. Can you explain to our audience why it's very, very important to have a very structural, uh, very well-established financial, personal finance uh, services and institutions? Yeah, sure, Mo. Look, I think that our ambition for this, this overall hackathon event was um, we, we, we're very clearly seeing that, that savings in particular around, around um, the general populace and globally is something that's um, in stress just now with COVID. But even before that, as a trend, typically a lot of nations aren't saving, um, which has a direct correlation on the impact to GDP and the overall health of countries. So the, if, if, um, if there's a strong investment and, and savings culture in a, in a country, and this is in particular in, in the kingdom, in Saudi, um, there's, it, it drives up um, financial literacy. Um, people are, have better well-being. Um, they're able to plan better, and actually that money feeds through the, the banking system, through through the various different investment vehicles, and actually flows back out to support small to medium enterprise, corporates, um, and and people's um, personal retail financial ambitions around if they do need to to get a loan and and expand um, maybe their their own kind of personal horizons through working with a banking partner. So number one, um, customers not meeting their savings goals. And that's the that's number one ambition for the kingdom as part of the 2030 vision. Um, the, 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 the Saudi government um, and the various different kind of authorities are very keen, uh, along with SAMA, to turn that around. And interestingly, as a statistic, um, countries like China um, are the biggest savers. Germany are next. But actually, the, the Middle East region, as you go further down mature economies, is actually quite low in terms of the percentage of people who are able to save. So I think for, for us, the whole overall ambition here is to support the agenda of saving, provide capabilities to the general population, retail customers, consumers, to be able to save easier. And that's the overall objective of this, of this initiative, Mo. Thank you. Uh, what are basically, what's, what's basically going to happen if we have a generation, as you mentioned, who don't save? What, what, what could happen eventually to, our, to the economy of countries in GCC or anywhere else in the world are simply millennials and generations that don't want to save at all? Yeah, look, I think, I think um, you're going to have a society who are not prepared for emergencies. Um, you're going to have a society who are, are reliant on debt. Um, it's, uh, it, that has um, less, less kind of positive experiences for people's lives. So there's going to be potentially health issues in the back of that. Um, people stressing about their financial position. They're not able to, to plan for the future and have freedom. Um, and I think, I think most importantly, especially for the millennial segment, people are not going to be prepared to do the things they want to do. And, and for us, it's important that we have um, a society who are, who are equipped to deal with all these different factors. And I think even more importantly, when you've got a situation that we've all had with the likes of COVID, if people are out of jobs, um, if there's stress in terms of the, the, the actual welfare and, the, and the, the overall kind of the working communities that are there in terms of um, job availability, um, they're not, people are not going to be prepared to deal with that situation. So ultimately, it, there's a number of factors, uh, but those are just a few that I feel would be useful to discuss as part of the group. I'll get back to you in a bit about how uh, millennials and Generation Z are behaving when it's come to personal finance, but I'll go first to, uh, to Padr. Padr, what the technology role here, what Oracle, let's, let's focus here on technology, we'll go back to Oracle. 
can play in, in, the, in the, let's say, in personal finance, how technology can accelerate that, how technology can help banks and other independent financial institutions serve generations who are basically not willing to save. And let's say they're not okay with the old methods of doing personal finance. Okay, thank you, Mo. So when you deconstruct the concept of saving or personal finances, you can split it into three phases. So first, education. You mentioned something about not willing to save. No one is, doesn't, will, doesn't have the will to save. It's all about not understanding the value of saving. So starting with education and educating the customers of the, on the value of saving or having setting aside part of their income for future use. Then there's the other portion, which is the second um, funnel stage, which is awareness. You'd be surprised that many of us are not really aware of how we spend our money. So if I ask you, for instance, how much did you spend on uh, caps, for instance, or, or lattes over the last year? You wouldn't I can really answer have that, that immediately to... because I have Spendy and I have been using it for years and I can answer, I can tell you ex exactly what, uh, if I'm happy with a country or not based on what exactly I invest most of money every, every month, basically. Yeah. So you wouldn't so be I'm aware. Not sure, I'm not sure if that's the general experience. Yeah, most of us wouldn't be aware of how we uh, invested our money or where our money went. Finally, uh, the empowerment. So I decided to save. I want to set aside 5% of my income. How would I do that? Where would I put my money? Much of our society is on, not banked, is not covered by the banking sector. And even those of us who are covered by the banking sector are not aware of the saving products provided by banks. And many of the saving products, to be fair, are quite... Um, quite hard to understand and for the normal young millennial who are who is just starting his life it's too much of a hassle to understand so technology plays a part in each of each one of these phases starting from getting the user or getting the a person to understand uh, the value of saving understanding and analyzing the spending behavior and patterns by using big data for instance and analyzing the spending trends based on his bank reports and finally, finally, empowering him to save by using uh, positive habit enforcement, using things such as gamification, which I think we're go going to speak about later, or even setting him up with products such as a cookie jar provided through his e-wallet application. So really, the, the applications of the technology are, are quite limitless here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pater. Uh, Mo, go ahead. Uh, you guys are a great example of utilizing technology to serve such generations. But for, firstly, uh, I would like to ask you about the key components to build a financial institution that is focusing on individuals. And you guys have an amazing experience with value in Egypt. Well, thank you, Mo. But uh, to start with, I think um, it's it's the basic uh, thought process. So. First of all, you need to, to think different. You need to uh, not take what's happening in the financial industry or what has been happening in the financial industry as your benchmark uh, to, to, to start with. The second thing is that you need to know more about the customer needs. What, what do customers need now, given that financial institutions have been around the world for the past hundred years. So, so you have lots of banks, lots of uh, financial institutions uh, all around the globe, yet the penetration is still low in many, many regions and many areas and many continents. So you need to know what are the pain points? Is it uh, something related to uh, lack of channels? Is it uh, mostly about uh, documentation and how you, you have to, to sign sets of documents if you want to open a bank account or to enroll yourself in a certain financial um, uh, service. Uh, other thing is maybe it's related to a turnaround time. So by the time you apply to, to a certain service and finally you get it, this would take you like a month or so. Uh, or maybe it's it's the... the, the um, the, the number of procedures and processes and checks and verifications you have to go through just to take a simple service of, let's say, transferring money to one of your relatives or your parents or whatever. So, so these things you need to identify at the beginning, for sure, before starting anything. 
And then finally, you need to start from where uh, others have stopped. So you don't have to uh, uh, reinvent the wheel again, but try to make the wheel move uh, faster, be more fluid in whatever models you, you want to, to, to provide to the market. Uh, your proposition and your model should be basically driven from the customer needs and the market needs. This is the main point. If we apply what you just said on Valeo, what are the secret sauce basically? What are the main things you guys did over the past couple of years to have such positioning in the Egyptian market today? Well, simply we worked on the inefficiencies on, of banks on their retail proposition. So, as I said before, now if you want to apply for a, a credit card to use in your daily expenditures, it would take you like from 15 to 20 days to get the card from the bank. So what if you can give this approval or give this uh, credit decision to a customer instantly? This is one of the milestones you have achieved and will definitely uh, be appreciated from the market. The second thing is the uh, ease of use. So by, by utilizing technology and capitalizing on the infrastructure that is there, uh, uh, you can give a seamless uh, experience and a seamless process to customers so they find no obstacles or hinders that would prohibit them from using the technology itself given that they are already very familiar with uh, technology. So if we take, for example, the let's say the social networks here in Egypt, uh, uh, the penetration rates are very high. So you might find people living in the uh, suburbans, they, they don't have any financial services and they are completely unbanked, yet uh, they are very active on Facebook or Instagram or whatever the, the social I always media. say, I always say in, in, in the MENA region, uh, the internet is Facebook and social media platforms and the fa Facebook and the social media platforms are technically the internet. Exactly, um, exactly. This is, this is for, for us, or mainly for the Arab world, this is what has been prevailing for the past, let's say, 10 years. So, so we need to change. We need to adapt and, and, and change ourselves to do like whatever those platforms have did to gain the attraction of customers and provide them as well what's in their financial benefit. So you need to be very clear about the proposition you're giving, you need to, uh, to, to provide something that is of real benefit for uh, the customer when it comes to uh, financials. Uh, Grant, uh, just a quick comment from you on, he mentioned clear, uh, being clear and he mentioned yesterday how transparency played a massive role for value growth. Why it's very hard on the banks to be as transparent as the online easy stuff that my generation basically use. Yeah, so I think the, the simple answer to that is, I guess some of the traditional banks have chosen, um, maybe through not listening to their customers, to get that kind of transparency right from the first place. There's actually nothing stopping traditional banks doing that. And I think that's one thing that, that, that you'll see from the likes of the bank I work for and many other banks, they're, they're now realizing that they need to put the customer first um, so and understand the customer more effectively um, and get their proposition right rather than kind of go in with a kind of product first or a, a kind of regulatory view in terms of what they can and can't offer. So I think um, things like design thinking, um, getting, getting the, the customer right at the center of the proposition is ultimately what you're finding a lot of the banks are doing just now. They're reimagining how they engage with customers. And, and, and that's, that's um, to Mohammed, your, um, the proposition that, that you've launched in Egypt um, hats off to you, fantastic. You've, you've, you've got something which is kind of resonating well because you've actually answered the questions and the asks of what real customers want. And I think that's what we need a lot more of in the industry. Uh, thank you, more. thank you, Grant. Grant, moving uh, to talk about GCC and Saudi in specific, what are the main behaviors of millennials and Generation Z when it's come to personal financing? What are exactly they're doing? Who's, what, is it different from males to, fe to females? Is it different from certain areas to another? What exactly is happening? Yeah, look, I think, look, I think the first thing is um, when, you're, when you're looking at the, the millennial segment um, and, gener and the Generation X below that and, and even up to the, 
sort of the, the 40 plus um, um, age group. Everyone's wanting to, to, especially when it comes to retail consumer banking, they want to do it via their smartphone. Um, they want to do, they want instant access. They want it to be easy, simple to use, transparent. So like, I think to, to that discussion point beforehand, that's what a lot of people want and they want that access. Um, we, we recently did a, a piece of work where we, where we spoke, we spoke to thousand plus customers around their position just now. And this was in the kingdom, but I think this applies as a concept to a lot of other countries across the, the, the whole Middle East region. Um, and here's a couple of quotes for you all. So um, we had customers saying, I'm taking money out of my savings account every month. So when I do save money, I can deplete it. Um, I can't see progress towards my goals. So I don't have that kind of end point. I don't know where I'm getting to. Um, I don't know where my money's going. So I don't understand what, where I'm spending it. Um, I have no incentive to save. So they don't really understand from a financial well-being perspective the benefits of it. Um, there's a wide acknowledgement that life's getting more expensive. Um, taxes are going up, um, salaries are getting squeezed. Um, lots of people saying, I don't know how to manage my money. Um, so from a guidance perspective. Um, and, and a lot of people saying there's, there's especially in, in the kingdom, um, the country's transforming, there's new experiences. So when we get out of COVID, um, there's lots of things to do. People have got, they want to live their lives and, and they want to have the facility to do that. I think that's the important thing. So what does that mean? Um, ultimately, some percentages for everyone. 85% um, of the people we spoke to don't feel financially comfortable. Um, there's, there's, um, when you look at the kind of mix between people who are saving and not saving, um, this was from the, the Saudi Authority of Statistics. And I think this is also evident for a lot of other countries. And it's even more powerful, the impact of it, when you look at Egypt with a much bigger economy. Um, in excess of 55 people cannot save every month. So they, they're literally living with whatever they get to pay for their bills. Um, so actually, it's a smaller percentage of the population, especially in the millennial and the youth segments, who actually have the facility to save. So I think I think the key things here are, and actually, when you look at it as well, when you look at the mix between male and female, um, that the women population, you guys are much better at saving than males typically. Um, I think it's it's a historic thing. I think women yeah. are saving much better than us historically. Than enough males. So uh, um, it does seem like millennials and Generation Z uh, are no different, basically. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think the important thing is I think it's important that for if if that situation is corrected through um, fintech and banks providing better mechanisms for people to save, it's going to address a lot of those issues. And I think a lot of that has to be done via digital channels now. Um, that's that's kind of the last message I'll leave you with. Um, honestly, combining your, your the status you just shared with your first uh, with your answer to the question on how important is is, is saving to to well to well being and the economy. Uh, honestly, I'm a bit worried because if in a, in a country like Saudi, 85 percent are not financially comfortable. I would expect the number to go way up in countries like Egypt or Jordan or definitely Lebanon or, or Iraq or Syria. So, so when I look at the, on the majority of the region uh, citizens as we speak, I can easily say that 90% of the citizens of the region are not financially comfortable. That means they're not getting a good health care, they're not getting a good education, they're not getting, uh, they're not, they're not happy in their lives and that's very uh, scary in on many many levels um, um, for a major problem <laughs> yeah uh, we're, really we're heading yeah i think we could be heading towards something that is much way much worse than just not saving uh, going to more on 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 the same point what but from the technical aspect what are the main features uh, millennials and generations that are using within value and what are the main features and services they're looking for and could potentially help them save or potentially help them get what they need in life? Okay, let me uh, start uh, from what you just uh, finished your statement with is how that lending would help millennials uh, save. So uh, getting access to finance uh, makes you think about the, the cash in your pocket, the, the excess of money you didn't pay in full for buying something. It makes you more responsible um, and think about your monthly obligations and repayments. 
and you follow a certain discipline or routine in your life that make you more um, uh, conscious about wealth accumulation. So, so how, when to start accumulating wealth, when to start from the bits and pieces to reaching a certain uh, target or a certain uh, milestone. So this is what we help the youngsters uh, in doing by giving them access to uh, uh, credit. So this is actually what's, what's happening. So now if you have, in, let's say, if, if you're having the, 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 the full price uh, for buying an iPhone, but I come and tell you, you don't have to pay it in full. You can install it on a 24 month plan paying like 1000 Egyptian pounds uh, a month. You would start thinking about this excess money in your pocket, what to do with it today, okay? Not, not later on, so today. So we help you. But back to the question about what millennials want, the, mainly they want to feel empowered. This is number one. Number two, they want to feel uh, um, in control of things. So you have to give them whatever financial tool uh, it should be accessible within the palm of their hands. So this is what we thought of by uh, um, developing a mobile application to onboard our customers and underwrite them and give them their credit uh, limits over the mobile. So, so we're making them uh, take control of their spending, of their uh, monthly uh, re repayments. They can uh, uh, even compare uh, some uh, merchants and compare some plans, installment plans and tenors. So this is number two. The other thing is which we're trying to develop and move into it uh, um, uh, moving forward is the customization. So uh, customers like customization or youngsters, they like customization and personalization. So this is one aspect that should be considered in any um, FinTech uh, tool uh, or, or business model that's about to come to the market. The, the, the third thing is the low cost or let's say a, a cheap service. So, so in, in my opinion, banks, they, they, they not intentionally, but mostly they, they rip you off in, in whatever product you're applying for. So if you applied for a credit card, you get a, you have to pay an issuance fees, you have to pay a renewal fees, you have to pay statement fees. Uh, mobile SMS fees, even if you did not use the card, you did you did not use yeah. it, so you have to pay all of this. What we've and, and the 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 last two points you just mentioned, uh, let me go to better for both of it. Um, now we have AI, we have gamification. AI could possibly cut a lot of costs the banks have today, uh, and are they are the, the main reason why, as Moses just mentioned. They're charging me for so many things I should not be charged for. So what do you think the role of AI and gamification and personalization can be to take this experience to the next level? Thank you. So it's all about bringing the, as Muhammad mentioned, it's all about bringing the financial tools to uh, people who are not really financially literate. We want them to learn more about what saving is all about, why should they save, the value of saving. Then you want to make them more aware of how they're spending, even set up targets based on their spending behavior. So AI, for instance, there are several products in the market such as Mint, Monzu, Whoop, that would go in and analyze uh, banks, customers' profile and spending habits. And based on that, they would provide you with what we call uh, lifestyle uh, tips. So for instance, we noticed that you've been spending a lot of money on smoking. Did you know that if you stop smoking, you will be able to buy a new car within two years? This is automatically generated. So uh, automated goal, automatic goal generation based on digital fingerprinting and spending behavior analysis is one of the ways to instigate savings and educate the people who are not really aware of the value of saving or What's at the end of the tunnel? If you think about it, saving is a tunnel. You have money that you're not able, that you don't want to access. So what would I get if I stop doing so and so habit and instead put some money aside? More importantly, you find a lot of recommendation engines right now. So if I want to find the best place that serves something or another, I can just open Foursquare and I'll find it. But on the other hand, if I want to find 
a saving product in which I can put in my money and actually get the best percentage out of, it's very, very hard. And there are a lot of dimensions there. Uh, your location, your nationality, your income level, it's, uh, it's very complicated for a certain, for a simple person to go and phone around and get the best offer. The best solution here is to have a solution that you can just ag access and it would, it would recommend the best saving product, whether within the bank or across multiple banks. Of course, gamification is another aspect. Um, gamification serves multiple purposes, starting from positive enforcement of habits. So for instance, when you cut smoking down for a week or so, you can get like a badge telling you that, congratulations, you saved, you saved so and so over the last uh, week and you got like a badge. If you think about it, this is being done across the board with the fitness trackers and all, but it hasn't been done properly in our region at least. Uh, products such, a, such as Monzi or Apple Cash are, are doing that, but you yeah. don't see it in our region. Products such as Mint as well yeah. goes in and analyzes automatically your spending habits based on your credit card reports. And it can tell you a very insightful things about yourself that you were not aware of. So for instance, you're spending 15 or 20% more than most of your peers on coffee. Why are you doing that? So on and so forth. Just a matter of bringing these technologies to the, to the region. And the advantage is you're working with a mostly a green field. So anything that a startup or a fintech would do would really pop and would really be visible. And in my opinion, the market really needs it and is looking for it, even if they are not aware of it. Yeah, uh, actually, um, just to confirm your points, um, um, I've been an Apple um, uh, Pay uh, user for a year or so. Honestly, their ex the experience within the app, uh, I feel it's a million year uh, ahead of all the banks I have their application on uh, under my, my phone. In fact, I have three bank accounts in the MENA region. I don't have any of them uh, mobile app on my phone because I technically cannot do anything other than just transferring money to someone within the same bank I'm, I'm in or very basic stuff that I would just do it from the web version and, and that's it. Yeah, I, I would bet as well that you don't know about the saving products available in these banks. I don't know the, about the products at all because it's not listed. I have Bank of America on the other hand. Every single product is listed. Every single product have a customer service dedicated. Uh, and since the day I joined, they're pushing many, many products on me. They're, they're trying to make me use as many possible of their services. Despite the fact I'm not there, I'm not, I don't have most of my money there, but they still wants to serve me in, in, a, in a much better way. But this is not the case here in the region. Despite the fact I have bank accounts in cool banks that is supposedly dedicated for youth, but that's not uh, the case at all. Going to, uh, to our final round of questions before asking you guys for advisors, I would highly appreciate if you guys answer within a couple of minutes or two. Uh, I'll start with Badr. What Oracle or how Oracle can help the fintechs participating in, participating in this hackathon and how on, on, on which domains? Okay, so uh, just to try to fit it into two minutes, um, we provide several things. We have the Oracle for Startups program in which we incubate startups. We, we don't take equity or anything. It's completely free of charge, part of our CSR program. We provide you with uh, a certain amount of credit and 70% discount that is capless. So you can knock yourself out. You can use tens of millions and you'll still get 70% over two years. More importantly, we put you through our PR system and we start uh, marketing your product as if it's ours. You get to attend events with us. We can even provide you with a booth if you are, uh, if you are qualified. So last year, for instance, when we had our open world in Dubai, we actually took one of the Saudi startups and a couple of ones, a couple of other startups from Turkey. None of them were FinTech, unfortunately. We also um, position FinTechs, and this is part of my, an essential part of my job. We position FinTechs and startups with our potential customers under a white labeling model or any other model as well. So often we go in and speak with CDOs and w one of the things that we offer is our e startup, what we call FinTech ecosystem, where we have more than a hundred curated FinTechs. And this, this is not just local, this is global. We do it around the globe. So the same list would be marketed and positioned in AppHack, for instance, in, in, in Australia, India, 
uh, even the UK. So this is basically what we do here. Uh, for Saudi startups in particular, we can help you get onboarded to the cloud. So if you have a product that is already running on a different cloud or even on-premise on, on um, self-managed services, servers, we can actually help using our services to transition to the cloud. This is completely free of charge. And uh, we set you up for growth, basically. Yeah, and part of our migration is related to re-architecting your solution to from the MVP phase to the hockey stick growth phase. Thank you, Badr. I'll move to Grant. Uh, Grant, what are the areas startups can help your bank and other banks in? And what are the services you guys are offering for startups? Or, or the services is coming, um, I, would, I would say, in the future, or the services you personally believe it should be there offered by banks to startups? Yeah, look, great. Thank you, Mo. Look, I think um, from, a, from a fintech perspective and BSF, um, and, and this applies to all banks. So we can't be, as a bank, and, and um, a kind of a, a very focused in, in the, the, be it the corporate or the, the retail space or various other segments of financial services. We, we can't be the expert in everything beyond necessarily that financial product portfolio that we've, that we've traditionally focused on. So great ideas around technology, great ideas around how to disrupt how we, how we actually put the customer at the center of what we do. Um, local, local and global perspective. All these things for us are, are going to be key to expanding our network. So we're looking to do a couple of things and this is, this has been proven in other markets. So creating a marketplace where we can actually bring together organizations that are beyond banking. That's one thing we want to be thinking about and how we can collaborate with the FinTech community. So how can we help an SME who's maybe in the, um, the retail space actually partner with other organizations who can supply them new products for their retail business? Um, these sorts of things for me is about creating these ecosystems, also creating an environment where we can collaborate from an innovation perspective with the tech and fintech community and startup community and actually give access to securely um, relevant data. And this is something that's been proven in other markets um, to support the open banking agenda. And this is something we're exploring as BSF um, with support from Fintech Saudi, um, who are obviously um, affiliated with, with SAMA. These, this is the next way. This is what's coming next. It's been proven in the UAE. We've had a, a banks like EMBD very focused in this area. This is something that we want to do to support the overall fintech community for the kingdom. Um, and I think, I think lastly, for us, it's about, um, there's also, um, how do we support the fintech community in terms of investment? And I think for the right opportunities, um, for the right kind of um, propositions that are coming through, I think in time, all the banks are becoming much more willing to co-invest, to support with liquidity, um, to actually help fuel a proposition. And this is something, again, as a third area, I think it's very important to help the overall ecosystem and the economy um, and, and help small startups become small to medium enterprises and ultimately hopefully become the next unicorn. Um, and that, that's, that's my bigger ambition, is how do we create that environment for all those things to come together? It's an exciting time in the kingdom. Yeah. I think there's some great momentum building. And I'm glad to hear um, that a few banks in the MENA region already decided to go invest in certain uh, funds. And it's, uh, it's the start and uh, we'll be very, very happy to see banks coming in because I do believe they're not only bringing their money, they're bringing so much in terms of managing that money. And it's something we truly need in the, in the, in the ecosystem across the region. Um, more, uh, both Grant and Badr are, we consider them as ecosystem enablers. But for you as a fintech um, uh, startup or a fintech company, what are the advices you would give to all the fintechs in the hackathon and in general? Well, to start with, we have to say that uh, we are all uh, uh, a little bit fortunate to be part of this region where there are uh, a lot of uh, holes and gaps to fulfill. Opportunities to fulfill. Yeah, a lot of opportunities, whether using technology or not using technology. So the, the opportunity is there. There are a lot of uh, ideas that can be uh, done. Um, and also, I think there are a lot of cultural aspects that we can build on. So if today we were only mainly focusing on saving and saving products uh, through this uh, hackathon, 
So we need to think as well about the, the, the waste, how much we waste, whether it's, it's a monetary, something of monetary value or, or uh, another thing. And this can be a start for uh, um, like shaping or reshaping our behavior into more of a saving mood. So, so, for instance, what I've seen in, in some countries around the world, and I think we lack this, we, we have a lot of uh, things that we, we, we leave over. Like, for instance, your, your airtime uh, on your mobile. Sometimes you lose your airtime because your package subscription has ended and you did not use this airtime before a certain period of time. Your uh, loyalty points, they expire before uh, using them. Um, whatever other 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 things that you get along the way through your expenditures and your behavior, these are all leftovers. Uh, I think those youngsters with us on the call, or all the, the the entrepreneurs and people with passion for building a new startup, they need to think about having uh, a sort of a of a of a platform, a universal platform where you can share monetary value and transform monetary value. So I can switch my airtime into a monetary value and I can cash out this monetary value at a certain outlet using technology, something like that, or maybe loyalty points and convert them into money or cashbacks or whatever. So I think there are a lot of things that we can do that uh, would serve the, the cause and serve the purpose of educating uh, um, customers about the saving and the changing this waste culture that we're living in. Uh, thank you, Mo. Um, uh, Badr and Grant, in 30 seconds, one advice to the participants of the hackathon. Go ahead, Grant. Um, wow. So much, so much um, in such a short space of time. Look, I think, I think the, I would be bold, be bold in your ideas. Um, be, be ready to integrate into um, an established retail bank, but also a disruptive challenger bank. So in terms of how you could integrate your proposition, and I'll leave you with that. That will just whet your appetite. Can I sum it uh, with be flexible? Indeed. Better. So understand the problem space and solution space. Uh, things in banking might appear a lot simpler than they really are especially for people who are not from the industry. Something as simple as setting up a saving account has a lot of things going on behind the scenes. So just make sure that you have a functional financial consultant with you just to make sure that you don't end up uh, with a product that wouldn't really work in real life. Okay, um, there is a very cliche, uh, cheesy advice that everyone else will say, uh, make sure you're building a product that really fits your market. Uh, I'm just going to move now to uh, to the questions from the audience. So please, if anyone have a question, please raise, raise your hand and I'll give you the microphone to ask one of our speakers, please one question per, per participant. Anyone have a question raising their hand? Hopefully we've answered everything. With our, with our kind of very <laughs> question points. But I'm sure we, uh, I'm sure some people will have questions, but I'm not sure if the hands appear to me, appear, uh, appears here, maybe Melissa can help us. Someone okay. well, just mentioned that they cannot raise their hands. But I, I'm gonna ask here. So while I'm just gonna give you basically the microphone to, to, uh, to speak also, just one second. I can uh, meet myself actually, so. It's good. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I understand the problem. I understand what kind of solutions. What I don't understand yet is what is expected out of the hackathon. So after this period of time, what is expected? Is it a presentation? Is it a product that works? Is it an MVP? What is exactly that? He wants to take that. Melissa, uh, do you want to, would do like you want to, to answer yeah. this question? Look, from a from from a, a BSF perspective, we're looking for for, for a concept um, that that we, you can present. But you could move you could move to a um, minimum viable product very quickly. Ideally, you've got something that you could maybe showcase um, to to kind of articulate the overall proposition. Um, but then from that, we're obviously going to do uh, an assessment panel 
and, and do some judging and pick pick out some of the, the bright ideas that we feel are going to resonate resonate the best and then we're going to then take that as part of the process make a final award but if there's some other great ideas there we may kind of have further conversations with other parties from bsf and actually then take that into an innovation environment and look at how we could actually test that out with our real customers and build it into our proposition so Hopefully that gives you a bit more input. Melissa might be able to give you a bit more feedback around the broader hackathon format, but we'll maybe take that at the end. No, it sounds good. Okay. Uh, Muhammad Rafiqi, please unmute yourself and go ahead with, the, with your question. Yeah, hi, this is Rafiq uh, Cleif here. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, basically, uh, first one is uh, you talked about uh, the structure. Thanks for that. A uh, couple of more questions on that uh, studio is basically, uh, what is the team uh, strength? Uh, how, how many uh, team members we can have and also how much time that is allocated is it per member uh, in, the, in the group okay, or uh, guys, sorry for interruption any question that is re related to how the hackathon works let's give it to melissa we i am um, we can do something after but for now let's try to have a, a question that is relevant to our speakers and for sure melissa can answer all your questions um, that have to do with how the hackathon itself works so um, there's a question here um, from Alexander. So Alexander, if you would like to unmute yourself and go ahead, please go ahead. Uh, sure, so I'm wondering about what sort of materials uh, and data that would be provided by BSF. By materials, I mean, you know, a potential list of savings products uh, that we could pick from and, and offer as part of our solution. Uh, and by data, I mean uh, actual user data on transactions or, or any other sort of data we could use to, to build a solution. You know, we, we discuss components such as AI and so on. All of these need are pretty uh, data greedy. So we, we're already thinking of that, that potential constraint if we don't have access to data. Uh, making these components part of the solution if we build an MVP during the hackathon would be, would be a bit of a challenge. Okay, Alexander, Grant, would you like to go? Yeah, just a couple okay, points on that. So we've, 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 we've wrestled short term with, with servicing bank data. So FinTech Galaxy are going to be providing some, some um, data as part of the process, I believe. Um, we've been working that through with them in the background. Um, so you won't have kind of live bank data or kind of even dummy bank data, um, but there'll be, there, will, there should be access to data through FinTech Galaxy sandbox. In terms of the, the savings product, we really, I don't, I, what I don't want to happen is we, we kind of just kind of repurpose products that, that BSF already have. I'm looking for what I'm what I'm looking for is innovation in terms of how can we really disrupt the whole saving space um, for for the consumer the consumer retail market in the kingdom and beyond. So I'm looking for um, you you can you can probably get access to that if you want to scour a website, but but that's not going to be um, ultimately the outcome we're wanting. We're wanting kind of new bright ideas around how we could do things differently. And I think through leveraging data assets, through AI, through um, data science um, linked to that. These are the sorts of things that will um, could be an option for us to kind of differentiate and do something much more insightful to customers. So before going to Jose, um, Muhammad Rafiqi, do you, the, your other question um, have uh, have to do with the hackathon itself, or it's for one of our speakers? Just to make sure. No, it was related to hackathon. Okay, so Melissa, as you mentioned, will answer that. I, so, can, Jose, I can go ahead and answer his question related let's, to the let's, hackathon. Let, let's, give, let's give the next five, ten minutes to our speakers, and then we can go to, okay, sure. uh, to, to the hackathon-related questions. So, um, Jose, you, you have a question regarding uh, tools which implemented for uh, Bank Francie. I'm not sure about um, if I'm reading this right, so please oh, uh, unmute yourself and go ahead and ask the question. Uh, myself, Jos. Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Yeah, we. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, my question is: uh, Was uh, there is any tool which are implemented in personal finance management in Saudi Arabia? If yes, uh, is it? Uh, why don't it not popular or why, why is it failed? But there seems want to want to answer this question. Friend, do you want to answer it or do you want me to pick it up? No, please. I'll let, I'm interested to see what you say. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so in Oracle for Startups, we've been interested in fintechs for the last two and a half years since we launched our Oracle Innovation Hub in Riyadh and the data center. 
And over that time, we, we interviewed many, many, many fintechs. Good. Personal finance management has always been one of the things that we are actively recruiting. We're always looking for someone who's providing a PFM product. The challenges that we're seeing are, there are two dimensions of them. The first one is when you have, um, let's say civilians building a product without really understanding the, the solution space they are working on. They don't know exactly what kind of data they can get from the banks or how they can get it. The other challenge that we're facing is most, more systematic, systemic. So in Saudi Arabia, the bank, this is one of the challenges, very specific, but let me explain it in all cases. When you swipe your card in a shop, the shop name in uh, the uh, payment handler doesn't really map to the commercial name. So for instance, if you go and buy something from, let's say uh, Starbucks, it wouldn't really show a Starbucks in your report. Uh, if you go and buy a t-shirt from a shop, it might be called uh, Muhammad's organization. So you cannot really tell or analyze the patches based on the name of the shop. The challenge here is systemic. You cannot really do anything about it. When it comes to banks, it, come, it becomes even more interesting. The, you know that the card machines are being exchanged between branches, uh, shop branches. Even sometimes under the same group, it gets exchanged between, uh, between subsidiaries. brands. Yeah, yeah, so it gets very, very, the data itself that you're using in order to analyze and build, uh, uh, build basically the profile of the customer is, is tainted. It's not uh, clean enough. Uh, then the other challenge, maybe that's the third dimension. You don't have a lot of data scientists available in the market. So even if we manage to acquire clean data, it's very, very tough to find someone who can wrangle this data and generate uh, actionable insights on them. Uh, do we have products here that is trying to do PFM? Yes, we have seen a mint, uh, a mint clone that didn't really go anywhere because of the challenges that I mentioned earlier. Grant, Grant do you have anything, a comment? Look, yeah, well, yeah. what I would say is that there's a big gap in the market in Saudi. Um, that's why, that's why um, I think it's everywhere across the region, basically. Uh, it's, it's the region, but in particular in Saudi as well, it's been, been exacerbated. So I think um, it, it's, it's one that will be closed down in the coming, in the coming year. Uh, there's a number of kind of new entrants. There's a number of other, other, other providers who are coming into the market beyond the traditional banks, um, which is being thankfully supported by Salmon um, and creating that whole overall kind of FinTech ecosystem and starting to look at releasing new banking licenses. So I think it's, it's something that will change, but it's, um, it needs to change fast. I think it's, it's, it's a problem, certainly for the, 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 the mass market millennial segment we've been discussing today. Uh, Hassan, let's go to Hassan. Hassan, you have a question? Okay, thanks for letting me speak. Um, in terms of savings, uh, what are some sources of capital and transactions uh, that are not currently in the banking ecosystem? You guys got the question? No. No. Can you please repeat the question, please? Sure. Um, I'd like to fit in. Uh, in terms of savings, uh, what are some sources of capital and transactions that are not currently in the banking industry, like gold transfers between family and friends? What do you think actually hinders saving as people do not? Um, uh, I'm not sure if I'm getting the question, but I think just to sum up what you just said, you, are you asking about what kind of transaction that the banking sector are, is still not covered, right? Yes, and um, the sources of capital. What transactions? Source of what? That, source of capital. The source of those transactions or? Uh, capital. Capital, I think, I think he's saying- Capital, he means capital. Ah, okay. Uh, like I think more can can comment on that that we we can see a lot of this happening in Egypt. Like uh, I think most of the transactions are still not going through a bank at all. Yes, I think we have a, a lot of a lot of transactions that are not going through a bank due to the red tape procedures of the bank, whether it's on a merchant side or on a customer side. So to be part of the uh, or even between individuals, I guess. Exactly, exactly. To be part of this financial ecosystem or regulated financial ecosystem represented in banks, 
you have to go through a lot of uh, red tape and routines which uh, not all uh, people are very comfortable with uh, given uh, the, the, the educational level and the uh, cultural preferences and, 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 and lots of things. So I, I think banks and financial institutions so should take this into consideration while putting some products over the shelf. It's not a, a unified product that uh, one size fits all. They need to tailor much more their products to be more uh, adequate and appropriate to uh, different age uh, uh, brackets, to, to, to different cultural uh, uh, preferences, to even different geographies. So this should be taken into consideration. Currently what we see is standardized on the shelf products and that's it. It's a take it or leave it proposition, nothing else. Okay, thank you, Mo. Um, I hope thank we you answered so your question. Uh, Wael, please uh, unmute yourself and go ahead. Wael Khattar. Wael, if you can hear us, please um, go ahead and uh, share your question because uh, the text you wrote is quite long and I'm not sure if. Uh, I think I think if while well, struggling with mute, just to just to give a, a, a quick response to that. So, we as part of as part of the the shortlist and the, ultimately the the winning the winning hackathon um, participants, we'll go into a more detailed exercise to look at the feasibility of actually um, embedding the capability that's that's um, that that we feel was is is kind of the right theme and it's got the right kind of cutting edge or innovation to support the exercise. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll go into how it aligns to our process and how do maybe do we need to change some internal kind of um, procedures we've got to make it work. I think up front, we won't be doing that. So we're, we're almost wanting people kind of to imagine unbounded by maybe some legacy process or some inefficiency that, that what we may have in our current bank and actually just kind of come, back, come forward with in an ideal world, this is the innovative idea. This is ideally, and I think to one of the other points um, Gorgie's put here, um, is the, the, the people who, will, will, who have an actual prototype or an MVP in the process <laughs> will get an edge because we'll actually be able to see something that's been developed, even, even if it's kind of an initial stages, to actually imagine how that could actually play out um, in, in the overall kind of um, banking environment for us and, and how it would resonate with clients. So I think going in beyond, um, so I'm jumping to another question here to support the, the overall point to speed things up. But going beyond the PowerPoint deck and an idea, um, it's quite important, I think, for the, for the winning winning party. Uh, I think I think usually judges come from business background and would, would, they would love to see how things can could potentially make money and how it could potentially work. And those are the top two things to to show. And if you guys are building prototypes, make sure it just minimally function, but showing how the process itself works. Because I know sometimes we spend so much much time on the process of uh, showing a prototype and we forgot that we have to in the first place sell this prototype to those judges so make sure you have mix of both and basically uh, the judges knows for sure that they are judging a hackathon so they won't have an expectation to see a perfect uh, uh, prototype but they would have expectations to see how this um, a prototype could potentially make money and uh, become a, co a company that could bring either a solution to their entity or money to, re to give them a return on their investment in such company. And just to add to that, Mo, I think the other, the other, other important thing as part of the FinTech Galaxy Hackathon format, there's going to be an opportunity for mentoring sessions. So yep. um, we and others are putting in mentors into the process. So we'll be able to give some guidance. It's not like a black box where you, sh you, yeah. you, you kind of submit and then, then it's a judging panel. Um, there'll be an opportunity to actually have some input to, to the proposition, maybe some guidance, and which will help, help um, the various different um, hackathon participants develop their prototype a bit further for the final judging panel. Okay, uh, before moving to Melissa, anyone wants to, uh, to, answer, to ask a question, uh, please either unmute yourself or raise your hand. Uh, uh, otherwise, I'll move now to Melissa uh, and ask her to continue uh, answering your questions regarding the hackathon itself. 
Anyone? Okay, we, I think we're good to go. Uh, thank you, Grant. Thank you, Abader. Thank you, Mo. Uh, it was a pleasure, and uh, thank you so much for the information. And I think, especially when it's come to personal finance, it's been enlightening, honestly. And uh, I personally I learned a lot from the process of preparing for this panel and from what you guys just mentioned. And honestly, uh, as a big fan of uh, Value and their their chairman, I guess uh, Walid. I'm so happy to hear a lot from uh, from more uh, more insights on how they operate and, and I was very very impressed yesterday with the amazing stuff they they have done and how the market is reacting to uh, their product because honestly in a country like Egypt if you ask me uh, let's go do authentic I would be very hesitant and I would be like man it's it's a tough market but honestly, uh, what value have done is an example and it's a case study and someone needs to write about it and someone needs to tell banks in Egypt. There is much easier ways to do things. Uh, Badr is, uh, is now uh, officially a speaker in residence uh, around every hackathon I participate in. And in anyway, thank you Badr so much, uh, honestly, and thank you to Oracle uh, for supporting this hackathon and supporting almost everything happening across the region and supporting Startup Brian globally. Uh, Grant, thank you so much for sponsoring this hackathon. Thank you for being part of the future, for supporting uh, um, founders and supporting uh, people who are trying to build their own, um, their own companies. It's something we need and we hopefully will see every bank doing in the upcoming few years. Um, and I'll leave you guys here. Um, if you guys would like to see one final thing or something, uh, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Just, um, just quickly, I'll be going there first. I'll be very quick. Look, thank you all um, for, for the interaction. It's, um, it's great to see that, that, that there's a lot of passion in this topic. Um, there's, there's a lot of people interested in the hackathon event, which is, it just supports the, 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 the overall like, social agenda we've got here, as well as, as, a, as a, a FinTech and a, and a business agenda. So um, just delighted with your participation. Really looking forward to the actual event um, and, and ultimately the output. Um, it's gonna it's gonna really kind of get a lot of interest within the Saudi, within the Saudi market. So, looking forward to what's to come. Thank you all, Mohammed. Oh, you sorry. wanted to say something. Over to you. Yes, please. Well, well, thank you, uh, thank you, Mo. I'm I'm overwhelmed with your uh, words, um, and thanks uh, for the opportunity in getting to know Grant and Badr as well. It's been a pleasure speaking to both of you. And uh, I wish the best of luck for all participants in the hackathon and for uh, BSF. Uh, and uh, may the best man wins. <laughs> uh, Bazar, would you like to say anything? Uh, yeah, thank you guys and thank you, Mo. Uh, till the next uh, hackathon or event, you most probably be again uh, paired up together. But for the contestants, uh, Oracle Cloud is available in Saudi Arabia. We have a data center here available in Saudi Arabia. If you're not aware of OCI, uh, just do a quick Google. It's very similar to AWS if, and it, it exceeds it in many, many different aspects. In Saudi Arabia, we have data residency laws that mandates that the data should remain within the country. So you cannot host a FinTech application cross-border with the data cross-border. Oracle is here to support you. We'll provide you with the cloud credit. You'll be able to go in and use it. And if you need my help, I'm available as one of the advisors in the hackathon as well, along with many of my colleagues. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Badr. Thank you so much, Grant. Thank you so much, Muhammad. Uh, thank you to everyone who, who, who joined us. And uh, thank you, Melissa and uh, Myrna for the opportunity to moderate the session. Uh, I'll leave you to Melissa now. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, so basically, I'm gonna make it quick for the sake of time. Uh, basically, now we will be shortlisting uh, the startups uh, on the uh, starting 20th of August because this is when we will close the submissions. From 20 to 23, we will be working together with uh, Bank Saudi Finance to start choosing the finalists for the hackathons. For the hackathon, and basically we will announce uh, announce them on the 23rd of August. Then from there. As um, Grant already mentioned, we will be having a mentoring session, heavy mentoring session, from the 25th of August till the 27th of August. This is where uh, each startup will be engaged with different mentors coming from different backgrounds, from uh, uh, 
with a deep knowledge uh, on the value proposition, technical development, regulatory compliance, uh, go to markets and pitch to win. So basically, uh, we will help you along the process from the 25th. 25th till the 27th. And then of course, we will give you a couple of days to work on your prototype slash pitch decks, it depends on what's your approach. And then from there, uh, we can move to the pitch competition, which will happen on the 30th of August, where you will have the judging panel and they will start asking you questions about the, the solution itself. Yeah, and in a nutshell, that's it. And we will get in touch with each of the teams who submitted the solutions at a later stage. I hope this was a bit clearer. Okay, I just wanted to say one, one more thing for the top three participants of this hackathon and anything Fantech Fanti Galaxy could possibly uh, organize in the future. We would love to offer them three months free of uh, set of point membership. It will give them um, exclusive access to content and to investors and they, uh, they can utilize it for the, for the first three months for free and it can help them uh, easily raise uh, so much money, especially from outside the region. Thank you so much, Mo, for everything. Thank you guys, Grant, Badr, Muhammad, nice to meet you all. A pleasure. Until next okay, hackathon, great. inshallah. Yeah. Best of <laughs> luck with the hackathon, everyone, and, and thank you. Have a good day, what's left? Thank you, Melissa, thank you. Melissa, I had a question. Yes, tell me. Yeah, it's regarding the hackathon. Thank you so much for the speakers. Uh, yes, Melissa, the question was, uh, till 20th, the teams have to register and prepare the teams. Anything yes. that the team has to do before 20th to 24th? No, no, nothing. All you have to do is register, put your team description and the details that are provided on the platform. Uh, with a high level of submission. And then from there, we can start uh, shortlisting uh, the, uh, the the startups. But you don't have to do anything before. Just make sure you have a team, make sure you have uh, an idea, a description uh, to actually start uh, building our shortlisted startups. That's it. That's it. So the submission forms and the pitch deck and the prototype, everything is from 30th onwards. On 30th. Yes, okay. it's for the 30th, yes. And we will help you build this uh, from 25th till the 27th if you, were, if you are shortlisted. Okay, and anything uh, before, uh, so, so on uh, and the pitch uh, deck we will have to submit before the pitch uh, competition, right? Yes, of course. It should be submitted way before, like a day before uh, you should have, uh, you should submit the final uh, version. We will discuss this at a later stage. No, now, for now, we, all you have to worry is about is to have your team ready and the description ready and the high level of, uh, of the idea. And all of it is in the managed team section, right? Yes, everything is there. You can see all the documents that you can add. You're free to, to add whatever you need. And everything can be edited at a later stage. Nothing will uh, prevent you of uh, doing any modification. That's super. That's super. Okay. okay. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.